Your 3D printer likely has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. There are other options out there from larger to smaller and even ones like hardened steel, ruby, and even diamond. There's a lot out there when it comes to nozzles. So let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you want to learn more about nozzles for 3D printers, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We're gonna be talking a lot about nozzle diameters. And in an upcoming video, we're gonna be talking more about nozzle geometry. So that's coming soon, TM, stay tuned. There is a lot out there with 3D printer nozzles, but generally speaking for a FDM or FFF 3D printer, your machine likely comes with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle standard. And that's fine for 95% of the work that you would do. But if you are looking to get better detail, going down in your nozzle size can be good. But there does become a line of diminishing return, and we find that normally around the 0.25 millimeter nozzle. Smaller than that, particles of dust can actually clog your nozzle, and if you do get a clogged nozzle something like a 0.15, I wish you nothing but the best luck to go ahead and unclog it because it's gonna suck. But when you go up in nozzle diameter, you oftentimes will lose some of that quality and surface detail that you would get with the 0.4. Tom Sodlotterer, a fellow content creator here, we'll link to his videos in the description, actually did some videos where he went through this idea of is 0.4 millimeter nozzles, are they dead? They're not. And he did find that you could get reasonably similar quality out of a 0.6, but you could then also go for much higher layers. You can go all the way up to 0.45 or even 0.5 if you'd like to push it. With a 0.4 nozzle much above 0.35 millimeter layer heights and you're outrunning what the nozzle can do. Now realize most 3D printers are limited when it comes to their extrusion rates. Most 3D printers are somewhere in the 10 to 15 cubic millimeters per second of plastic pushed before you will start to run into issues. And that's where nozzles like the Bontex CHT come in that have internal geometry to solve this. And there's something coming from E3D. Get subscribed if that's something that you'd like to see. But when you look at other materials like glass fiber, glow in the dark, carbon fiber, and more, you can't use use a regular brass nozzle and oftentimes you're looking at a hardened steel or a nozzle from today's sponsor diamondback if you are looking for the best nozzles on planet earth and i came to this well before they were a sponsor of the channel you want to look at diamondback nozzles literally tipped in diamonds and if i have to tell you why that's good maybe you should figure out why diamonds are a girl's best friend first better thermal conductivity dead strong incredible detail and because it's a polished diamond surface your parts are basically auto ironed so you get those beautiful crispy top layers and no more are you adding 50 to 20 degrees centigrade for a hardened steel nozzle you're lowering your temperatures with a diamondback carrying a factory warranty made in the united states diamondback nozzles while not cheap are some of the best damn nozzles that you can put on your 3d printer we know this because we run them on a lot of our printers soon coming up on the Solval sv06 and the sv06 plus keep an eye out for that live stream we're going to be upgrading the plus to make it uh, more user-friendly, in my opinion. But we do have a code in that description down below to save you a couple of bucks on your Diamondback nozzles if you do so want to get some. And I do recommend them because uh, it is quite literally the last nozzle you'll ever need. Don't worry about ever getting a nozzle clog again because there's pretty much nothing that you can do to actually damage these nozzles as they are tipped in polycrystalline diamond. Quite literally one of the hardest materials available to man. Victoria thinks they're pretty great too, so... I mean, honestly, if you don't trust me, you got to trust this cat. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back to talking about nozzles. Links in that description for Diamondback. And while there are options out there for hardened steel and diamond and ruby and everything like that, you might want to start with just a regular brass nozzle. At the end of the day, it's good to start slow and work with the materials you're used to. Things like PLA, PETG, ABS, and ASA are going to print a little bit different when you change your nozzle sizes. You can't run the same speeds that you were used to, certainly not at the same temperatures that you were used to, because you're going to start out running what your hot end can do. Remember, the larger the nozzle, the more you have to get heat to the center of that filament. And if you can't adequately heat your filament, you'll first see it by your parts turning 
more matte than you might expect, especially on parts like ABS and PETG, where it's naturally a little bit shiny. And nozzles like the Bontech CHT do look at solving this issue where they breaks the filament up into multiple channels, allowing even larger nozzles than the filament itself to be run. Yes, you can actually run a 1.8 millimeter nozzle on 1.75 millimeter filament. We did it in a recent video, we'll card to it, you guys can take a look, where I put a 1.8 millimeter CHT onto a Prusa Mini and did an 11 minute Benchy. Take that speedboat race crypto bros, I win. But if you do want that extra detail, you can go down in nozzle size below 0.4, go to something like a 0.25. While it will vastly increase your print times, going to 50 micron layers, that is 0.05 millimeter layer, is second nature for a 0.25 millimeter nozzle. In fact, a 0.4 can go that low, but much lower it starts to struggle. A 0.25 can go lower than 50 microns, but your patience may not be able to get there. Remember, the smaller your layer heights, the longer these prints are going to take, and the larger the likelihood that you're going to run into an issue with something like your filament basically getting ground down in the extruder, heat creep, or something like that where you're not moving enough filament through that hot end fast enough. In fact, it's somewhat common that people will opt to use a PTFE lined hot end when you are using a smaller nozzle because it has a lower tendency to clog because that PTFE is a self-lubricating plastic. It doesn't have some of that sticktivity that you get with all metal hot ends. But with something like the E3D Revo, which we'll link to in that description down below, you can go that low and coming soon, they're gonna be offering high flows that will go much higher. Definitely don't already have one of those. But looking at options out there, normal nozzle sizes don't go much above one millimeter because when you go above that, you start dealing with the center core of your filament not getting hot enough. And you have to start printing PLA at something in the range of 250 to 270 degrees centigrade, which is uh, a lot of degrees freedom. Uh, it's it's really freaking hot, way higher than PLA wants, but it's the only way that you can get the heat into the center of the filament. If you are running a printer with 2.85 millimeter filament, you could of course run a much thicker nozzle than you can if you're running the 1.75. So there's one of the few benefits of running a 2.85 millimeter printer. In fact, we have a Lulzbot TAS 6 with a Morstruder, which has that 1.2 millimeter diameter nozzle on it without any special internal geometry, just a 1.2 millimeter diameter nozzle, and it makes some thick parts. But when you do start trying to print with big layers, things like cooling really become a problem. But this is also consistent when you go below 0.4 millimeter. You have to make sure that your cooling is more than adequate when you go lower because your layer times go down considerably because you can run your printer a lot faster when you run lower layers because you're not going to outrun the heater of your printer all that often but be careful. Some printers, their bone stock settings will outrun their heaters. I'm looking at you, Bamboo. I I'm just grabbing this, it's okay. This is a 0.08 millimeter print with stock settings, with polymaker filament and polymaker filament settings. All of this is bone stock. It's a pretty easy fix. You just slow the machine down, but make sure that you take note of that before you start a big print like I did, because I, I, I trusted manufacturer stock settings. Silly me, but be aware of that because when you do go lower in those layer heights, you can push your speeds, but at some point you will start to run into other issues like simply running out of stepper motor. It is awesome to see printers move very fast. And when you start doing things like input shaping, smaller nozzles actually end up sometimes beating regular speed non-input shaping printers with 0.4 millimeter nozzles. However, with extra speed, does come extra responsibility. We're gonna talk about this in a future video and likely a live stream series where you join one idiot's journey through Clipper. I'm the idiot. Get subscribed if that's something that you guys would wanna see. When you are looking at materials like glass fiber, carbon fiber, and even glow in the dark that uses strontium aluminate, which is abrasive because it's got aluminum in it or aluminium for those that actually know what it's supposed to be called. That chemical will damage your brass nozzles. Don't believe me? Go Google it. Seriously, we don't really run glow in the dark here for one, that specific reason, but two, the glow kind of sucks and you get better glow by just painting it with glow in the dark paint. So not radium, don't use radium. 
don't. Doing something like carbon fiber, this is a material that I've been testing out, but this is a carbon fiber benchy. It's a material I can't talk too much about, but work with me, okay? It's wet. As you can see, it's a little wet, but this material is crazy abrasive. That abrasion means you can't run it on a standard brass nozzle. You'll destroy it. So you have to go up to something like a hardened steel nozzle. Or remember, when you do change out your nozzles, you do want to go ahead and rerun your temp towers if you ever ran them in the first place. I almost never run temp towers. I just kind of send it. But something like a diamond nozzle from Diamondback, of course, thanks again for sponsoring this video. Links in that description. You want to lower your temperatures or increase your speeds drastically because they can flow a lot more than you think because again, higher thermal conductivity, but they're also abrasion resistant. Looking at something like a hardened steel nozzle, like on this E3DV6 here, beautiful copper block nozzle X and all the good stuff on this hot end. This thing requires like 240 C for PLA to print at any reasonable temperature. And that's because of the copper block, titanium brake hardened nozzle. This is like a $130 hot end in its current configuration, but you know what? Runs like a Swiss watch. So that's why we love them. We do hot swap them into printers as needed because it's, it's just easier sometimes. But that setup means that things change a little bit. I do not under any circumstances recommend that you utilize a hardened steel nozzle or any abrasion resistant nozzle other than a diamond below 0.4 millimeter. Any material like carbon fiber is pretty much guaranteed to clog a 0.25 millimeter nozzle pretty much instantly. You're gonna have no chance. Even at a 0.4, you're gonna get clogs. And we did. The nice thing about a Diamondback is it's really easy to clear the clog. Just cold pull it, it doesn't matter. They don't care at all. Those nozzles can, you can really beat them up because a lot of good quality carbon fiber, I am specifically talking about good quality where you have long fiber chopped bits in that filament rather than just like carbon fiber dust poured in. The actual length of the carbon fiber is larger than 0.4 millimeters. And that means if it doesn't come through the nozzle completely parallel to the path of the filament, and it's instead perpendicular, it's gonna cause a partial block of your nozzle. And if you don't have the filament pressure or it being a you know slightly cold enough to push that clog through, you're gonna end up with a failed print. So we often recommend for fiber filled materials, whether that's glass fiber, carbon fiber, Kevlar, whatever it might be, wood fill even, 0.6 millimeter and up are pretty much the best way to do it and effectively guarantee that you're not gonna deal with any clogs. Ever since we took our diamond Prusa here behind me, from a 0.4 Diamondback to a 0.6, we have had zero clogs. And I have fed over 15 kilos of the best carbon fiber nylon that 3DX Tech makes through it without any problems at all. We've been feeding it some material that I've never used before. In fact, I don't even remember what it's made out of, but I believe there's butylene in it because it, it kind of stinks and it doesn't care about this stuff either. It's been great. And that extra diameter on your nozzle does of course reduce your print quality. You'll still get dimensionally accurate parts, but you lose that minimum feature size because your nozzle diameter is what it is. Now with Cura's Arachne, of course now in Prusa Slicer, Bamboo Studio, and Orca Slicer, which we're gonna do a video on coming up. I'm gonna start trying it out probably mid this week, see how I like it. And of course, film my initial take on Orca Slicer versus Bamboo Studio because uh, it'd be nice to have other options of printers to run in there. Every one of these benefit from the Arachne engine, which enables the line width to be adjusted on the fly by the slicer so that you can get relatively sharp points even with a larger nozzle. With Arachne, you end up really getting a lot of the benefit of a 0.4 with a 0.6. So don't necessarily be afraid of trying other nozzles. And if you have an E3D Revo, go get extra nozzles. They're cheap and it's so easy to replace them. I understand that if you have a regular printer where you need to hold it with a wrench and then unscrew the nozzle, all of which must be done at temperature, by the way. And let me know if you guys want a video on changing nozzles, let me know in the comments below. We'll, we'll try to do one. It's a tough thing to film, but I'll do what I can to make it happen for you guys. But remember, once you do it a couple of times and you get that torque amount right, it's not that offensive to just change nozzles as you need. Of course, we do recommend utilizing something to make your life a little bit easier and Companies like BQ have actually made a torque wrench designed for nozzles, which is pretty cool. I'm told it even holds the block while it unscrews, which is like proper cool, but I don't have one in my hand yet. So if anyone knows a contact at BQ, I'd love to get one of those because that would be a really cool thing to take a look at as well. And I get it, right? 
high temperatures, potential for stripping things out, potentials for a lot of money spent. Changing nozzles isn't a lot of fun. And with innovations like E3D's Revo, you have options. It just comes at a bit of a cost. The Revo is not cheap, but it is a really nice ecosystem, especially now with Obsidian being available at a reseller near you. With high flow obsidian maybe i don't i honestly don't even know that'd be pretty cool if they could figure it out though it might might be complicated huh now i'm wondering if that's even possible i know some of you from e3d watch these videos dm me we should talk about this it comes down to what are you trying to do if you're trying to print faster put a bigger nozzle on it have some fun but understand you're gonna lose some of that detail you can utilize variable layer height to really get extra speed where you need it and quality where you don't but if you do need extra quality don't really care if your prints go longer, yeah, dropping your nozzle size isn't a bad idea. But when slicers do have infill combination where you are able to run a lower perimeter count, but be able to basically print multiple layers of infill at one time, that really can speed up prints that even have a lot of detail to them. Inside of Prusa Slicer, you're able to set how much infill combination that you want, whether it's two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers on some really fine layer heights five layers is not impossible it's pushing it but it's not impossible in bamboo studio just you it's a on or off box and then it figures it out so i don't know how they do it but there's some algorithm that they're running but that will still get you the quality that you want on the surface without really eating too much into that print time because at the end of the day it is really all about print time and if you have never experienced laying down some fatty layers it is pretty awesome to see what is possible with uh, just a bigger nozzle. There's nothing more comical than laying down a one millimeter thick layer with a 1.5 millimeter nozzle. It, it just makes you giggle. You're printing five layers at once. So let me know in those comments below, what is your favorite nozzle size? And are there nozzle sizes that you want us to be checking out here on the channel? We've got an entire suite of the Diamondback nozzles up to one millimeter. We've got CHT nozzles up to 1.8 millimeter. And uh, I'm told there might be some more fun coming from E3D here relatively soon. So I'm excited for that as well. I'd love to know what you guys use and why down in those comments. That's all we have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones, and as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Take that, speedboat race goobers. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video, a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon, YouTube channel member, and now PayPal channel supporters, whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all for what you do in making these videos possible. And if you do want to support the channel financially, I have links to those in the description down below. Right below me will be our first look at the Bontech CHT, where we printed some real thick lines, and I'm talking like thick with three C's here. Right next to that will be my first look at the Diamondback nozzles before they even knew we existed. Don't forget, links to Diamondback in that description down below as well. Go check them out, give them some love, pick up a nozzle if it's within your budget. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.